when you look at a picture, really the first thing that happens is the person puts themselves into that scene. Like, what would it be like to stand there? It would be so awesome if I was there. That's a feeling you want people to have. And if you can explain depth to them in the way you compose your photo, it just makes their brain just automatically happier. Here's a story about Morocco and people photography and me almost getting killed, uh, whilst in Morocco. So I, um, I always think a lot about people photography. I, I love taking photos of people. And this story is ostensibly about how to get over your fear of taking photos of people. I know this is something that a lot of photographers um, struggle with. Because I think photographers actually like taking photos of everything, especially people. But people are uh, sometimes a little, uh, it's a little tricky. Um, you, know, you don't want to offend them. You don't want to, people to get angry at you. You don't want people to think that you're some kind of a creep. Um, and this is also something that I struggle with. Um, I overcame this actually many, many years ago. It's another story, but this was only reinforced recently in Morocco. Uh, so I'm here in uh, Namibia now, having a, a wonderful time. But this actually happened in another part of Africa, uh, up in the north, about four months ago. So I started in, um, in Fez, and I ended up up in the north in this place called Chef Shawin, which is this beautiful town. It's up in the mountains. Everything in this town is painted baby blue, sort of this powdery blue. I mean, even the ceilings and the walls and the ground and everything, it's unbelievable. And so I'm walking through this town, and it's kind of cold and windy, these little narrow kind of medieval streets, and I saw this man. Um, he was a Berber man. And, you know, he had all the wrappings and the sort of stuff like that. And, and I wondered, actually, you know, is he a, is he a Muslim? Uh, you know, what, what's going on? Uh, is it bad for me to take this picture? Is he going to get angry at me? Uh, but he was so interesting, and he had so much character in his face. And I didn't actually know much about Berbers. So I kind of kept my distance, and I, I didn't do anything, uh, but I thought about it a lot. I did take a lot of other photos through the streets of, of Chef Shawin that evening, uh, but they were more sort of anonymous. Um, you couldn't really see the people sometimes, and that kind of felt a little bit more comfortable to me, but I really want to take a picture of this guy. So I ended up going all around Morocco um, uh, before I came back to Chef Shawin to, to kind of end the story, what we'll, we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but as I went around, I ended up going to um, the Sahara. And there's Berbers all over the Sahara Desert. And I was on a, a camel uh, riding through the desert with all these Berbers. I stayed in some Berber camps, and I really got to know their culture and how they thought and found out a lot about um, the way they meditate, uh, that it actually has nothing to do with Islam at all. And it was just so fascinating. So then I went around, and then something kind of exciting and unexpected happened, and I ended up in um, Marrakech. And I was walking through the streets. Um, I was kind of taking some street photography uh, in sort of an anonymous way once again. And uh, I was behind this old man. He must have been like uh, 80. He was bald. And he was walking kind of slow. And I was also walking kind of slow because I'm just looking at stuff. You know, I think when you're doing street photography, you can't go full speed. Um, so I'm behind this guy, and then these two kids come up. They must have been 18 years old. And uh, one of them just slapped this guy really hard up against the side of the head. Not a playful slap, but like a mean kind of, you know, violent slap. And I'm wearing my jalaba at the time, you know, my hooded thing. And so this kid kind of ran off. And for whatever reason, I started chasing him. I started chasing him through the streets of Marrakech because I felt like he did something wrong. Everyone. Like this guy pretty much fell down and everyone gasped in horror that this happened. So basically, for some reason, I went vigilante and I started chasing this kid down and I grabbed him about a block later and I pinned him up against the wall and I kind of did this sort of, I don't know, this Batman growl type thing at him. Um, it was wild. I don't even know what came over me, but I just felt like there was this great social injustice done. And it was some sort of like karma I was giving back. and and. Um, and I'm always actually, I mean, you guys know me, I'm super happy, super loving, super nice. I don't like flip out like that. Just when I see something ridiculous happen, it makes me, I don't even know what to do. Um, and then people cheered. I was like a hero. It was really kind of a strange experience. And then afterwards, I thought, oh, this guy could have stabbed me or done anything. And I thought, wow, um, you know, Morocco is like a really violent place. I could die any time. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be taking photos so freely. Maybe I should 
be more on guard. But after that, I kind of reflected on it. I thought, you know, it's actually better just to be open and go with the flow and see what happens. Uh, one thing that happens in Morocco, like a lot of places, is people are always coming up to you on the street trying to sell you things, trying to get you to go see their, their uncle's rug shop and all this sort of stuff, right? Uh, people are always trying to give you guide, guided tours. And so you can either go through like these streets and be closed off and say, no, 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 and be really into yourself. Or um, you can do what I decided to do, which is be totally open and just say, yes, you know, I'd love to go see your cousin's rug shop, or yes, I'd like a tour of that. Just be totally open and sort of unexpected. Uh, be sort of playful and have fun with it. Um, of course, you don't have to do everything. Uh, but just being open and going through this is sort of a uh, analog for life. You know, you can go through life and be all scared and say no to opportunities, or you can just say yes and see see what happens. So I ended up back um, in Chef Shawin, back in this mountain town. Once again, I was doing a, I was filming a promo for this company called uh, Smug Mug that I work with. They flew in some people and had some cameras there while I was going around taking photos. And I saw this guy again, uh, that Berber that I really wanted to take a photo of. And uh, he actually had a little shop. And I went in and I told him about my time in the desert with some of his fellow Berbers. We talked about the different tribes. And we ended up sitting there for like an hour talking about how they do meditation, um, how they think about the world and the universe, how at night they close the four doors in the four directions. It was really lovely. And I just had this meaningful moment with him. And then at the end of it, I thought, oh yeah, I want to take this guy's picture. I said, do you mind if I take your photo? And he said, no, absolutely not. So we went out and we had plenty of time to get the kind of photo I really wanted to. And I felt super happy with the photo. He was so comfortable. I was so comfortable. It just felt like the right way to take a special kind of photo. So that kind of reinforced this thought that it's perfectly OK to talk, take photos of people. Um, it's good to be genuinely interested in them and not just pretend. Um, and then really the, the photo comes after. And there's this wonderful thought that when you see someone that looks unusual or different or in a weird outfit or an unusual outfit or a wonderful outfit, whatever it is, you don't take a picture of what the person looks like, but you take a picture of who they are. And that's what I humbly try to do. So let's get practical here. Um, what does this mean for you and your uh, people photography? Well, I think there's mm, maybe three types of people photos. Um, there's like modeling photos, like a studio situation. Um, there's kind of random street photos of random people. Um, and then there's sort of these setup situations like I just talked about. Um, those are largely the three categories. I'm not going to talk about studio model photography. That's a totally different topic. Um, I will um, touch on the middle one, though, sort of the random street photography of, of strangers. I think it's perfectly natural to take photos of interesting people anywhere in the world. And there's actually a way to be like cool and respectful about it. You know, you don't want to hang out with like this big lens and be really creepy and take pictures of just like girls and stuff like that, because that has a really weird vibe, right? But what you can do is you can just be kind of open and smiling and take pictures. I prefer personally to take pictures of people before they notice. Because once they notice, they act a little bit differently. And it's a perfectly anonymous thing. Um, if they're an interesting person, this is a great thing to do to take their picture because um, they look cool and they're beautiful on the edge of the world or they're interesting. I think it's just totally natural to take their picture. I see nothing wrong with it. Um, now, if they notice me taking the picture, um, I find that 99% of the time they have no problem with it at all. They're, sometimes they're confused, but then I'll go up to them and I'll show them the picture and we'll have a nice little moment. It's sort of a reason to have a, a conversation. And usually they're super happy. Now 1% of the time, honestly, they do get upset. They don't want their picture taken uh, or they're with somebody secret. They don't want their picture taken, whatever it might be. And they'll come up to me and tell me to delete it. Usually they're not mad, but they just ask me to delete it. And I always do, of course. But I don't let those accumulate into some sort of um, you know, cumulative uh, badness. I more look at a batting average. So of my, in my whole life, I've probably taken, I don't know, 5,000 photos of random people. And about 1% of those people have come up to me and said, please erase it, which I, which I totally do. Um, this even happened at Burning Man, where people are very open to their photos being taken. And sometimes teachers or people of import come up to me and say, please erase that. I don't want that going out on the internet. So I'm like, OK, it's totally cool. 
So my overall message is don't worry so much. People are often flattered that you find them interesting enough to take a photo of. So this is a, this is a really good natural thing. If you're super scared and still worried about it, I recommend like going to like Asia, <laughs> like uh, Japan or, or someplace like this. I, I have a hundred percent success rate in, uh, in Japan. I have one weird story I'll tell another time. Uh, but Asia is a wonderful place to take pictures of people because they just absolutely don't mind. They're sometimes confused, but they certainly don't mind. All right. Now, uh, one thing that we're going to do here in Namibia is we're staying at this uh, amazing lodge. And there is this uh, woman that works there. And she's got this dark red hair. She's really beautiful. She's super interesting. And her name is the Desert Rose. That's how she introduced herself. So I thought that was so awesome. And so me and my friend Renee, uh, we super want to take a photo of her. And that's going to be kind of our next step. So I think tomorrow uh, we're going to go back and, and see what we can do. And I'll show you how I interact with people. Um, usually what I do, which I assume I'll do tomorrow, is I, I talk to them, I get to know them, and then I'll show them my portfolio, like on my, on my iPad. I have sort of a landscapey portfolio and sort of a people portfolio. And I let them look through the photos so they can see what kind of photos I like to take. And that gives them a really good sense of what they're getting into, all right? And normally they get happy because there's a few good photos in there maybe. And they get excited that I'm going to take their photo. They're going to have a professional photo taken. Um, I let them know that, you know, it's just uh, it's sort of a free thing. You know, I don't really want anything from them. They don't have to pay me. I'll just email them the photo. And people usually just love it. So that's a great way to get to know someone. Rather than going up and just having an awkward conversation and talking them into letting you take their photo, it's a pretty cool idea just to give them your portfolio and let them look through and go, okay, I'm into it. This is going to work. So anyway, uh, in the next segment, uh, maybe you'll see this work or maybe not, but we'll, we'll find out. I'm here with my friend Renee, uh, my roomie and uh, bestie here in uh, Africa, Namibia. And uh, we were struck a few days ago. Yes, that's, that one's for him. Thank okay. you. <laughs> um, we were struck a few days ago when we sat down at this uh, restaurant in this amazing lodge here. And um, this woman came in, and uh, what was her name? Desert Rose. The Desert Rose. And what, what shocked you about her when she came in? Well, it, basically, as soon as she came in, it was all eyes on her, all the <laughs> attention. And I don't know, there's something kind of mysterious about her, I think. Yeah. And so, you know, we're here with this group of photographers, so the first thing we started thinking is we all have to take her photo. Mm. She's really interesting looking. Um, and so you're here ostensibly for two reasons, here with me right now. One, uh, we both want to take photos of her. Right. And this is a kind of an episode about how to take photos of, of people. Uh, and the other reason is because you have a tremendous amount of difficulty in understanding the dinner menu every night. Yes. That's exactly <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to go over there and get clarification on the dinner menu. And then we're going to talk to her about uh, maybe taking her photo and um, you kind of see how we interact with her. Uh, probably very awkwardly, <laughs> but but hopefully effectively. <laughs> All right, so let's go. All right. Let's have a sip of wine and then go. Cheers. Right, cheers. Not a bad drop. Mm. Can we sit down here, Desert Rose? You may. Okay. So I know you remember uh, Renee from dinner last night, yes? I do. Yes. Is there anything <laughs> in particular you remember about him? He asked me to repeat the dinner menu for him in the click language for the second time. Right. <laughs> well, we're going to have you repeat that in a second, but first, um, you know, we're recording this thing and uh, we kind of wanted people to get to know you. So, mm -hmm. your name is? My name is actually Romancia Roman, but my house name is Rose, and that's where the desert Rose came up because I'm working in the desert. Oh. Born in Ochivaronko. That's here in Namibia? In Namibia. Uh -huh. The center of Namibia. And quarter past 4 a.m. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad my mom tells me yeah. anything. And you have a twin, we understand. No, the twin thing is in my imaginary world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when we talk to Desert Rose, we're not sure what's real and what's imaginary. <laughs> it all kind of blends into one. So yeah. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, as kind of a cool 
thing, I think it would be kind of fun if you repeated that dinner menu to Renee so that he could finally get it once and for all. I need, sure? I need to help, yes. Okay. Plain course. Good luck, I'm see. Take a we unha. I'm suck, I'm a bit erotica. That's the starter. Sounds good. <laughs> Appetizer, yep. <laughs> Tira that's it. Wow. That's right. You'll get it right after two glasses of wine. <laughs> um, so, what we want to do, um, if it's okay, is we want to take your photo. Um, uh, but first, before we do that, I want to show you like the kind of photos that I take. If you see something you like, you can say I like that style or I like that style or just things that are interesting to you, okay? I'll do that. So we kind of do this together as a team. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So you can just go through here at your at your leisure. Just this in Namibia too? No, that is in uh, the Sahara. That was in Morocco. Oh yeah. nice dunes. Hmm. China. Tokyo. Renee used to live in Tokyo. That's right. Yeah, I've been there for two years. Two yeah. years. Yeah. It's a cool place. Uh, Argentina. Okay, I also like this one. That's a nice one. I like mm. it too. Oh, she's Japanese. She looks very innocent. I also like that one. Yes. Okay, let's go do it. So, here's the idea. I have a photo that I've always wanted to take my whole life, mm -hmm. since I've been a photographer. Um, and it involves uh, a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you are you pro pool or anti pool? Me and not considered one place, but I'm going to try my very best. Okay. For you. So <laughs> <laughs> the idea is this, and we may change a little bit. And Renee is going to help me out, and he's going to take photos also. But um, I want to get you in the pool, uh, but get your just your neck above the water. Okay. And I'm going to get down at your eye level, and so basically I'll just see your neck coming out of the water, your eyes. And the only thing that's going to be in focus really is your eyes. Okay. Um, so we're going to get the blue off the water and the sun from above and your red hair and we'll see what we can do. All no right. Problem. And we may be organic and change it around, but all right. Does that sound okay? Sounds perfect to me. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's go do it. All right. There's a rose action here. Now, when you, when you get in, I want you to be about one meter away from me. Okay. I know you will. You'll do great. This is acting acting skills. All those acting classes, this is what this is for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, now get a little bit closer to me. One more mini step. Okay, hold on. Let me see how you're looking here. Okay, go down lower, lower. Just I want just your neck out of the water. Okay, just your neck. Now um, straight on, so I see both your ears together. There we go. Now, can you go down so that just your eyes are above water? <laughs> By the way, this is Renee's idea. <laughs> Towel guy, wine guy. Okay, now. Yeah, when you hold it, hold it a little bit, like halfway down the stem. Okay, move it back a little bit so it's even with your eyes. There you go. Now move your whole body a little bit this way. There you go. Okay, okay ready? Set, go. Good. Stop. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Cool. That was it. Okay, towel boy, you're on duty. <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome to the Desert Rose Show. She should have her own series, shouldn't she? Uh, let's look here at what we have. I want to show you a few photos and kind of which ones I chose. 
Uh, here's four different photos that I kind of liked. All right. And of these, of this particular setting, I think I like this one the most um, because, you know, she's just right up there in the center. I love how the sun is flashing off the, the blue water up into her eyes. Um, I think the colors are really nice. Um, and these other ones are all right, but her expression just isn't that great. That one's kind of good, but frankly, I got a little bit out of focus. It's really hard when you're shooting that close at f1.4 to get what you want to in focus. Um, and I was in a super awkward position. You probably saw me getting my neck back like that when I'm on my, the ground. I can't, uh, I can't do that so much anymore. But anyway, um, this is my favorite of that series, of that particular series. Now, um, the one where she's splashing wine around, I kind of had two that I liked. Uh, one was this one, and the other one was this one. And I actually think I like this one more. Uh, they're both all right, you know, but I do like this one the best because I, I just like how sharp um, these little droplets are, how they're kind of frozen in midair. I also like this other drop here, um, how it's coming up out of the water. Uh, it's just so awesome to me, I think. Uh, and of course, she's perfectly in focus too, which I like. I will show you one um, post-processing trick with this one. Okay, let me show you uh, basically what happened here. By the way, all these were shot at 1 4,000th of a second, ISO 100, um, f1.4. The reason that I got the shutter speed so fast is because it was so bright. And if you're shooting at f1.4, you really got to make that shutter speed nice and fast if you're going to um, make sure the photo's dark enough. Okay. Let me show you the settings that I did here on Lightroom, and then I'll show you one extra little trick. All right. So how do we get this look? Okay. Well, this was largely one of the presets um, with a little bit of additional tweaking. Let's just go through here. So you can see here immediately that it's a little bit overexposed. Okay, it was all normal exposure is kind of right here, uh, but I kind of like it a little bit um, blown out. All right, it's fine to have a few highlights that go over the top. I think I think it kind of makes it sort of arty. Um, I got the contrast up a little bit. Again, that's a choice. You can soften it with low or uh, really get that contrast up there to make it nice and Nice and inky. Uh, it's your choice. It's your choice. Um, the highlights I did bring down a little bit. Um, the shadows I brought up. Of course, this is really just affecting her skin color. Um, it's you know not better or worse than one. I kind of like it dark and I kind of like it light. It doesn't really matter. Um, I kind of kept it right there in the middle. Um, the whites this is just sort of the blown out area, which I'm leaving blown out. By the way, you can click on this thing and this will show you the truly blown out parts. Um, where they are. So you can see like if I bring this up, you just get a lot of really blown out stuff. Some people, if you don't want to have any highlights too light, they just they bring this down until they don't see any more uh, red at all. Okay, but I don't mind a little bit. If you bring down the whites to get rid of that just a little bit. Okay, those are those two buttons up there, those two triangles. Blacks we kind of left in the middle. Clarity again, because we have so much out of uh, focus area, uh, we wanted to keep that down a little bit because it doesn't look so good. We actually have the vibrance and the saturation down a little bit. Okay, we have a little bit of a tone curve happening here. And this basically just increases the contrast. You can see how most of the curve here is above the line. That makes it all a little bit brighter as well. Now here in the HSL, we have a few things going on. Uh, we took the blue from the water and I moved a little bit more into the teal area like that. All right, increase the saturation of it a little bit to amp it up. Um, and then also darkened it a little bit just to make the water a little bit more intense. Okay, so that's what happened there. Then you can see here in the split toning, what's happened is we have some colors in the highlights. Not much, just a little bit. We just kind of pushed the, um, uh, the whites a little bit into this light green area. And the shadows, um, this is helping to make that whole, give it all that whole kind of greenish or teal cast. All right, did some noise reduction. Probably a little too much. Let me bring that back down and a little bit of vignetting to bring the drama in on, uh, on her in the middle. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you one more color trick on this one. We're going to go Edit in Photoshop, all right? Because you saw how we were able to play with the colors here and uh, manipulate them using the HSL sliders. Well, Photoshop can do one more thing that's uh, pretty nifty when it comes to colors, all right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an adjustment layer, okay? So right up here are adjustments, okay? 
there's this thing here called selective color, all right? And you get this thing that pops up, okay? And basically, this allows us to really tweak out each of the individual colors, which can be very interesting. So for example, if I go here to the blues, I can change the amount of yellow that's in the blue, the amount of magenta in it, the amount of black in it. Um, let's go here into the cyans, which I think this more is. It's just the amount of yellow in there. You can see how the, the color goes more blue when I go that way, which I kind of like, and less green. Um, I can increase the amount of cyan in the cyan. <laughs> um, you play with the magenta, you can see it's just kind of changing the tone around. And also we can take the whole thing and brighten it or, or darken it. I'm sorry, brighten it or darken it. It's kind of the opposite way because these are the blacks. All right. We can even go here into the reds and start pushing these around different directions. You can see how that's changing her hair and the color of the wine there a little bit. Uh, increase the purple, decrease the purple. Um, play with the yellow, whatever we might want to do. And the last one, which can be quite powerful, is the neutrals. Okay, When you go into the neutrals and start moving stuff in one direction or the other, it affects a whole lot of the whole photo. Okay, So I might even make it a little bit in that direction. Move the magentas around just a little bit the yellows, just see what kind of works. And you kind of do get that kind of nice cross-processed look. There we go. So we kind of ended up with this. Let's go look at the original. Let's jump back to Lightroom. And let's just uh, totally uh, reset here. Okay, so this is the original shot, okay? Which isn't bad, but I decided to take it a little bit more arty, go into a different direction, and uh, ended up with this, which I quite like. Let me show you a few other photos that were taken that day, all right? Because we were all just playing around the pool, having fun. We came back after a shoot. Um, let's go here. Uh, we started with um, Belle, you know, who is uh, always behind the camera. Well, not always behind the camera. Here she isn't. And she jumped up and started playing with her hair. And I took photos. And see that tattoo there on her arm? She actually just got that before this trip. And uh, her dad was there with us, Neville. And um, this is uh, like the day after he found out about her new tattoo, but uh, he left it, which was cool. Um, anyway, I like this photo a lot because I like how this strand of hair is kind of covering her eyes and makes her a little, look a little bit mysterious as she is. Um, awesome, I like that photo. Here's another one. It's another one of her when she's just kind of turning around. And again, you see the shallow depth of field and the kind of nice effect that has on the background. Um, she really pops out of the, uh, of the shot, I think. Um, and here's where Belle and Desert Rose, who got along like a house of fire, they started playing around. So we were just snapping photos and having fun. Um, you know, these girls when they start being silly girls. Um, this one, was, I love this photo because it's so strange. You can't figure out you know, what the heck is going on. She's got, they both have just strange expressions and hairs all over the place and their hair couldn't be any different. They're just so contrasty and, you know, skin tone and, and everything, uh, but just both really, you know, alive and awesome. Um, here's another one. We took pictures of them together. Um, I kind of lined them up here in front of this wall. And this is one of my favorite ones of the, of the series. I like how we can see their shadows behind them and, um, you know, just so much attitude. It's uh, it's wonderful. So that's one, and the other one of them together I like is this one. Um, I love how her hand motion is the same as Belle's hair. And then also Desert Rose just has the strangest expression on her face here. I can't quite figure it out. It's just like this ridiculous smile, but uh, I like it, it's cool. Um, here's, here's a funny one. I thought um, they liked uh, getting their picture taken with Belle, and so she did a little selfie like that. Um, it was funny, I thought. Um, and here's a few more of Desert Rose that were just kind of in between. Sometimes I find that when I take photos in between, uh, they just come out really nice. Um, my friend Dini saw me editing this one and she decided this was her favorite. So I do like this one too. Um, here's another one. This one is actually one of my favorites, but I, I can't get anyone else on my team to like this one. I think she looks like an Olympian swimmer or something. Um, so awesome. Um, and here's the last one that I'll show. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, after my towel boy, Renee, uh, did his duty, uh, did it well, and got her all wrapped up and dried off, she was kind of warming herself back against this wall like a lizard or an insect. And she just looks so, uh, just like kind of warm, cozy, and a little bit vulnerable. And 
I love all the tones and I mean, it's just a study of browns and tans and beiges and her hair just pops out of this, uh, this little force of life, this little fire coming out of the top of her head. It's wonderful. Okay, well, thanks for joining me for this episode and I will see you again soon.